السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا. من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له. وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وبعد. We always begin with the praise of Allah. We send our peace and greetings and salutations upon the Messenger Muhammad wasallam. We testify with full firmness, conviction and faith that none is worthy of worship but Allah and that Muhammad wasallam, is his worshipping slave and final messenger. Ahibbati fillah, the greatest command that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enjoined upon humanity from awalina li akhirina, from our beginning to our end, anittaqullah. Be mindful and conscious, aware of your duties to Allah. Haqqa tuqatih, in the capacity and the measure that He is deserving of, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to complete our life upon our tawheed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our belief in Him, our Islam to Him, surrendering to Him with love, with fear, and with hope in His mercy, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ma minkum min ahad. There is none of you. Not a single one. Ya yadkhul al-jannah bi'amali. Who shall enter paradise in accordance to his actions of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the riwayah of Imam Muslim. None shall enter Jannah based on your deeds. What it means to you, my dear brother, my dear sister who may be listening, is as much as you pray, as much as you fast, as much as you are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your life which is full of deficiency and khataya and errors and sins and stumbles, does not earn you the right to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment and demand admission. قَالُوا وَلَا أَنْتَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ The Sahaba asked, not even you, O Messenger of Allah, مَا مِنْكُمْ None, no human. قَالَ وَلَا أَنْتَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ He said, not even I. إِلَّا أَنْ يَتَغَمَّدَنِ اللَّهُ بِرَحْمَةِ not even I shall gain admission to paradise based on our accordance to my deeds of righteousness and limit of evil. No one shall enter, not even I, until Allah envelops me in His mercy and places me in Al-Jannah. We today are going to speak about Muhammad as a life that we will extract lessons and examples. Because his life is full of lessons and examples. Let the one who's able to ponder, to appreciate, to pick the important points of his life and practice them and relay them to others. فقد فاز. That person is the successful one. The Prophet وسلم, he says, كل أمتي يدخلون الجنة. Which seems like a contradictory the opposite extreme of the first hadith. He says, everyone in my nation shall enter paradise. Illa man aba. Except the one who refuses himself. Qalu man ya'ba ya Rasulullah. Who's going to come and refuse on that day of judgment, the day of difficulty, the day of harshness, where only those who are blessed with the mercy of Allah shall gain admission? Who will reject it? Qala man ata'ani. The one who obeys me, the one who is in my fold, the one who is of me, of my people, enters Jannah, gains admission to eternal delight and paradise. The one who rejects me and disobeys me has excluded himself from Jannah. Our aim today is to hear the words of the Prophet Muhammad and obey. I want you to imagine yourself, and it's an impossibility, 
of being privileged enough to have been a Sahabi. I want you to picture just for a moment, just give me five minutes, dream. Dream that you wake up tomorrow and you are in the time of the Prophet Muhammad You're running to the masjid to hark the call to the salah, hayya ala salah, hayya ala falah. You know the man that will lead you in salah is Muhammad Think of what your heart feels like. I want you to imagine it, memorize it. What emotions you have, what anticipation you have, how quickly you will rush. How much desire you have to stand in that first line. But see the Prophet ﷺ, as he sat on his mimbar, moments before his death, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He began to weep. And he said, Ahbabi, the ones I love. The Sahaba said, Anahnu Ahbab. Are we the ones, or aren't we the ones who you love, O Messenger of Allah? He says to them, Antum Ashabi. You and I, we can't be his Ashab. He says to them at that time, No, you are my companion. Ahbabi al yu'minuna bi wa lam yarawni. The ones I love are the ones who believe in me and have not seen me. You're privileged as well. You're privileged. You have been honored by the Prophet Muhammad to be of the few who come to answer the call to prayer and who seek to hear the words of Allah and the words of His Messenger Muhammad It's Friday night. I don't know how hip Birmingham is. But in other places around the world, Friday night is an adventure. It could be an adventure in immorality. And for some like us, an adventure into the abode and into the lifestyle and into the habit of our Prophet Muhammad I wish just to give five examples from his life due to the shortness of time. The brother was really firm, 40 minutes. Like he didn't say 45, right? It was 40. Because 45 is too long, 40 is acceptable. Alhamdulillah. But we had agreed on this, inshallah. Five examples. First, as a husband. Muhammad was a husband. I know the brothers are starting to sweat. <laughs> a husband. Do you know that Allah says to the Prophet ﷺ, in censor of him, in correction of him, in rehabilitation of a moment in the Prophet ﷺ's good intention, Allah says in the opening chapter of Surah Al Tahreem, Ya ayyuhan Nabi, O Prophet of Allah, Lima tuharrimu ma ahallallahu lak. Why have you forbidden upon yourself something Allah made halal for you? And then Allah answers the rhetorical question. You've done so to give comfort and to seek the pleasure of your wives. Listen, did you hear this verse, my dear brothers? The Prophet ﷺ, in a moment of his life, Rasulullah ﷺ, he declares for himself something made halal and says, it is haram for me to enjoy this from here on in for no other reason than to please his wives. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet ﷺ would bathe his wife. Don't be shy by hearing these words. Aisha radiallahu anha kama yarwi imam al-Bukhari. She says, when it was time for the Prophet and I to bathe, we would have one pot of water. He would take water with his hand and pour it over me. One day Aisha radiallahu anha prepared a meal for the Prophet and the Prophet was of the habit, if he liked something, he would eat from it. If he didn't, he would not eat, but would not condemn it or say anything about it. 
He wouldn't say, I don't like it. He just would not consume fruit. And when the Prophet did not eat from the food she had prepared, he said to her, why don't we go Why don't we go to one of your sisters? He seemed to find their food a little bit tastier than the food of Aisha radiallahu anha. This made Aisha jealous. So they went, he took his wife Aisha, and the food was placed before the Prophet sallallahu and just in that moment, Aisha takes some of the food and throws it at Sophia. Jealous. Sophia prepared delicious food. The Prophet didn't eat hers. She took this food and threw it at Sophia. The Prophet ﷺ took the food off Sophia's face, off her, and ate it. Allahu Akbar. Real life. This is the real life. This is the home life of the Messenger Muhammad This is the softness that we were talking about in Khutbah al-Jumu'ah. The Prophet ﷺ sat on that mimbar moments before his death ﷺ, and he says to you and I, he says to you and I in admonition, Istawsu bin nisa'i khayra, treat your women folk well, treat your wives well. Treat the women in your life well. لا تضرب الوجه Never strike the face. ولا تقبل And don't curse. You might think, SubhanAllah, that means Brother Yahya, so if I don't hit the face, I can hit the arm, I can hit the leg, I can hit somewhere else. As is a mistake in translation and an error in wording. The Prophet ﷺ says, لا تضرب الوجه ولا تقبل Meaning, don't strike the face which is the greatest extreme and don't even use foul language which is seen as a lesser extreme to physical violence. So from that one to that other spectrum, anything in between is illegitimate. Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah, the great Imam of Sunnah, in numerous tapes, in numerous sessions, he would say that the man who strikes his wife in any form, in any capacity, has disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In any shape, in any way, in any form. Limada, because our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was described by his wives, was described by his family as being the most gentle in the home. Umar radiallahu anhu. His wife raised her voice on him, Umar. The one who the shaitan, if he saw him walking in a road, took another road. Yet in his home, his wife, she raised her voice at him. He got upset, so he went to the Prophet Muhammad As he came close to the home of the Prophet, he heard his own daughter, Hafsa, the wife of the Prophet. Her voice was loud to the Messenger Muhammad so he went back home. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is patient and can endure. So can I. The Prophet would mend his own clothes. His own khuf, his leather sock. He'd get some needle, some thread. And add another piece of leather. Sew up his own shoes. He would cook for himself. He would clean. He was a person whose ideal lifestyle was that of la takalluf, nothing excessive, nothing that was overboard. What was placed for him to eat, he would eat. What he had to wear, he would wear. What was presented to him, he would use. He was simple, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some of our brothers, no one here, I don't know anyone in Birmingham, so it's okay, I can tell you, right? Some of the brothers, they come home, know this food is no good. Throws it back. Make something else. You didn't ask me what to cook. Who told you to cook this? Didn't we have this last week? Why is this salad warm? 
Make another one. Takalluf, excessiveness. The brother will be outside all day working, humble, meek, soft. He comes home, he's a chalice, jaguar, fangs, claws, ready. That was not our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uswatun hasanan, a positive, virtuous example sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet was also a leader in his home. What do I mean by leader? We just heard Sheikh Suhaib Hassan on this telelink before Salah. I was listening, sitting in the back. He was talking about a moment in the life of the Prophet ﷺ where he would come into his home to pray his tahajjud prayers, his night prayers. Those of you who have been blessed to visit the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ, you will know that the separation between the house of Aisha and the Rawdah and the Masjid of the Prophet ﷺ is this great, one step. All he had to do وسلم, was take one step from his home to be in the Masjid. But yet the Prophet ﷺ was seldom seen praying any nafi or any sunnah outside his home. Not even in his Masjid where the prayer is hundreds of thousands in reward of the normal place of prayer. To the point that the house of Aisha was so small and confined that when the Prophet ﷺ made his sujood, Aisha would have to wake up and pull her legs in so that he would have enough room. You would say to yourself, why doesn't the Prophet ﷺ just exit and pray in the jamah, in the masjid? It's very simple. To be an example. To be a leader. So that people see him pray, even if Aisha isn't praying, she sees him pray, she hears the Qur'an, she sees his example, she sees his worship, she receives the barakah of its presence. That was the example of our Messenger Muhammad the Prophet ﷺ was also an astute trader. He was um, a businessman. You will find this not surprising knowing from his seerah that when Khadija radiallahu anha, before the risala of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ was delivered to him, when she came to choose of an individual who would represent her business interests, she chose a young man, 20, 25 years of age, who was a sadiq al amin who was truthful in word, trustworthy in action, who worked, who took caravans from Mecca to Jerusalem, to Bayt al maqdis He didn't sit idly, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was a man of action a man of motion. And as such, the second example of his life sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is activity in things other than that which are directly related to work, is a great part of his biography and his seerah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You find, for example, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he migrates to al Madina, when he has performed the hijrah, of the first people to begin to assemble the stones and the mortar, to build the first masjid in Islam, it is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was a person of action. Get up and do it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was his example to you and I. Third of the great examples of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was his fearlessness, his unabashed courage. How much we are in need of courage in the days that we live in today. The Prophet ﷺ on the day of Hunayn was surrounded by enemies. Handful of Sahaba remained with him. The Muslim force, which thought its numbers were large, were scattered. 
ويوم حنين إذ أعجبتكم كثرته And the Prophet was isolated alone in that valley with archers all around on the mountains. You would think that the first instinct of the Messenger Muhammad Sallam is come around me, shield me, he would get low, he would duck his head. He stands on his horse, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Stands up in his horse. أنا ابن عبد المطلب من أرادني فها أنا ذا I am Muhammad the son of عبد عبد الله ابن المطلب I am the prophet it is no lie the one who wishes to duel me to face me here I am fearless صلى الله عليه وسلم powerful in strength علي رضي الله عنه was one of the greatest champions in the Muslim ranks. No one would wrestle him except Ali would throw him to the ground. And Ali began to walk a little bit tall. So the Prophet ﷺ told him, أَعْلَمُ رَجُلًا I know of one man who can defeat you. فَقَالَ مَنْ هُوَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ قَالَ غَدًا Tomorrow, under a tree over there, you will find رَجُلٌ مُلَثَّمْ A man who's covered his face with his عَمَامَةً Go see if you can beat him. Ali comes, finds the man covered. Ali says, Al-Ula, let's have our first bout. He comes, thrown to the ground. Al-Thaniya, second, thrown to the ground. Al-Thalitha, thrown to the ground. Man anta? Huwa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But his fearlessness extended further than this physical parameter. His fearlessness was extended because of his reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He'd be hiding in a cave, surrounded in his hijrah. Fear is enveloping a Siddiq who is a rock of faith. And the Prophet says, La tahsab. Don't be scared, don't be sorrowful. Abu Bakr says, if they just look down, they'll see us. The Prophet ﷺ says, Don't be scared, don't have sorrow. Allah ma'ana, our Lord is with us. Tawakkul, fearlessness that is embodied in his faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is a lesson for you and I, my dear brother, my dear sister in al Islam. Another great lesson from the life of the Prophet ﷺ is his tadbir, his ability to live off the little. We look at ourselves and the homes we own or the homes that we live in, the cars we drive, the comforts and the luxuries we have. We look at this masjid and its luxuries and what we have been blessed with by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at times we forget what it means to have this concept of tadbir, to have little. And to make the little enough for everyone. The Prophet ﷺ would go through seven, eight, nine, ten days where fire would not be lit in his home to cook a meal. The Prophet ﷺ would wake up in the morning and say, Is there anything to eat? They would say, No. He says, فَإِنِّي صَائِمٌ Don't worry about it, I'm already fasting. ﷺ. You hear things in the media. I was looking at the newspaper today. They couldn't fit the number of zeros in one row of the debt that the government is going to bear during this financial crisis. Two trillion pounds. Sterling? Pounds. Two trillion. You can't even fit the zeros on one line. You have to take maybe two, maybe even three lines. And here it's important for Muslims to be very well aware of the example of the Prophet Muhammad Because my dear brothers and sisters, it will get tough. Even those of you who are comfortable and employed and have, or those of you who are under social services schemes and have been blessed, it will get very tough. Everyone says it. And the Prophet Wasallam's example in how he had this tadbir is a great and powerful message to you and I. 
The Prophet taught his Sahaba a very simple concept, which Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anha would repeat to everyone. Umar would say to the people, Waditu, I have great love of this. I really hope and akhruja min dunya that as I depart this worldly life, la liya wa la alay. No one owes me, and I owe no one anything. No one owes me, and I owe no one anything. Be very careful of the burden of debt that you have in these days, my dear brothers, my dear sisters. The habit of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam teaches you this. To look, Allah instructs this to you in the Quran, in the story of Yusuf. He says to the Aziz, to the ruler of Egypt, Saba sinin. There will be seven years of luxury and happiness, but there will come after it seven years of dryness, of poverty. Ijalni alayha, make me the governor of the supplies, because I have to restrict it. You can't just take these seven years of booming economy and not make note of what will happen later. Prepare yourself. That is the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tadbir. He would facilitate the ease of life in all of his circumstances. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was also a great example in his kindness to those who have erred. I'm in Birmingham, right? In Birmingham, there's a reputation. I'm sorry to tell you, brothers. All the brothers ask me, they ask me, you know, in hidden questions. So what have you heard of Birmingham, brother? I say, alhamdulillah, oh, only good things. But in Birmingham, there's this reputation that, you know, the brothers there, the sisters there, shidda. There's this sternness, which is alhamdulillah a righteous thing in the right capacity for the right reasons, which is also one of the examples we will give of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But the Prophet was extra merciful to the to the one who has sinned, the one who erred was of great concern to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa A man comes to the Prophet, young man, as is narrated by Imam Ahmad wal hadith Sahih, in his masjid sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and says to him, Ya Rasulullah, ithalni bizzina, just give for me, only me, just me, permission to commit, you know, zina. Samir al-Sahaba, the Sahaba heard this young man asking the Prophet this, فَقَامُوا عَلَيْهِ They stood up to beat him. So the Prophet expelled everyone from the masjid except that man, that young man. وَأَجْلَسَهُ Sat him down. وَجَلَسَ أَمَامَهُ حَتَّى رُكْبَتَهُ إِلَى رُكْبَتِهِ He sat in front of this man his knees, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, touching the knees of that man, that close. وَقَالَ لَهُ أَطَرْضَاهُ لِأُمِّكَ Do you wish to do this with someone have done to do this with your mother? Would this please you if you heard this intention from your mother? فَقَالَ لَا No. أَطَرْضَاهُ مِنْ أُخْتِكَ your sister, what would you feel if your sister asked me this question? تَرْضَاهُ مِنْ عَمَّتِكْ مِنْ خَالَتِكْ Your aunts. كَيْفَ تَرْضَاهُ لِنَفْسِكْ How then can you want it for yourself? وَوَضَعَ يَدَهُ الشَّرِيفَ عَلَى صَدْرِهِ And he put his hand, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on the chest of this young man. وَقَالْ اللَّهُمَ طَهِرْ قَلْبَهُ Oh Allah, clean his heart. Because that's an error of the heart. You might think it's a physical action, but its error starts in the heart. Oh Allah, clean, purify his heart. Wahsin farja, protect his chastity. Wahfir dhamba, and forgive his error. And the man left. 
Another man comes to the Prophet ﷺ, Imam al-Bukhari, in the Masjid of the Prophet ﷺ, and says to him, Ya Rasulullah, Qabbaltum ra'a, O Messenger of Allah, I kissed a woman. You were not you. Did you hear what I say, my brothers? I, you didn't, I didn't feel your reaction, your repulsion. A man comes to the Messenger ﷺ, in his Masjid in public, and says to him, I was intimate with a foreign woman. I kissed her. Someone who I have no right to be intimate with. The Prophet ﷺ said, Go make wudu, but make a good one. The man comes back, made a good wudu. He says, Salli rakatayn. The man prays two rak'ah. He says, I'm sorry. Now you may go. I don't want you now to say, Brother Yahya came to Birmingham and he said, Brothers, all you have to do is kiss a woman and make wudu, pray to rak'ah. Alhamdulillah. This is sunnah. La wallah. But this man came to the Prophet Ta'ib. Can you have that courage? Can you come to the Prophet of Allah and declare your error? You must have repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That man came fully ready and able to repent to Allah and the Prophet made it easy for him. Yuridullahu bikum al Allah wishes for you ease and comfort. Anibu ila rabbikum. Come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Watubu and repent to him azza wa jalla. The Prophet ﷺ saved mercy, kindness, softness for those who made grievous errors. And this same habit translated into the treatment of the Sahaba of each other. How many of you know of the Sahabi named Aba Mahjan al Thaqafi? Anyone know about this great Sahabi of the Prophet? ﷺ? Aba Mahjan was from those who entered into Islam in the last three or four years of the life of the Prophet ﷺ, he was a poet. One of the greatest poets to defend the Prophet ﷺ in shi'r, in poetry. Whenever the mushrikeen would attack the Prophet ﷺ, or someone would attack him, he would defend the Prophet in poetry. But Aba Mahjan was a drunkard. Aba Mahjan radiallahu anhu, couldn't leave the bottle. This is in the life of who? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fil Madina. With Abu Bakr, with Umar, with Uthman. He would come to the salah. And they would know that this man was on the liquor. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi passed away. And Abu Bakr passed away. And Umar radiallahu anhu is the Khalifa. Years after the death of the Prophet sallallahu Aba Mahjan is still consuming alcohol in his home. But Aba Mahjan was a fierce warrior. When Aba Mahjan entered into the battlefield, everyone moved out of the way. And in the battle of Qadisiyah, when they were opening up Syria and Transjordan, Aba Mahjan wanted to join the Muslim forces, which were under the command of Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas. And in the military camp, as they are about to prepare for dawn to face the enemy, Aba Mahjan gets drunk. Inna billahi wa inna ilayhi raja'un. And in his drunkenness, he exposes himself to the rest of the Muslim army. And Sa'ad is preparing for battle, has no time to this, so he says, Tie him up to that tree, and after the battle, we'll come and sort him out. So they tie up Aba Mahjan al Thaqafi radiallahu anhu wa ta'ala. And the battle begins, and he's standing and watching when he wakes up from his stupor, from his drunkenness. He sees that all the men have gone to war, and none is left but the women. So he says, Someone untie me. And the wife of Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, she comes and cuts his ropes on the promise that if he does not meet his martyrdom, he will come back and tie himself. So he covers his face so no one will deter him from going. And he enters into the battlefield and cuts through the enemy lines. And in our books and tradition, you will find that by his lead, 
the Muslim army became victorious. And he comes back and ties himself to the tree. And Sa'ad comes and unties him and says, I will not beat you, I will not punish you for your intoxication because of the courage you displayed today. And Abba Mahjan said, Wallahi la ashrabu abada qayyadatni al-dhunubu wal ma'asim. What tied me up to that tree wasn't the rope, it was my errors and sins. And he quit. From that moment on, he never drank anything again. Allahu Akbar. Sins, errors, mercy that is shown, clemency that is shown, love and encouragement and the ability for someone to reform. Your Lord says to you, Allah says, your righteous deeds cleanse errors, wipe them out. He is the forgiving, the merciful. And that example is taught to us from the Prophet Muhammad My dear brothers, my dear sisters, softness with those in error, softness with those who are not sure of the righteous path, Softness with those who are not acquainted with what you know. Softness with your wife who you are leading, who may be a step behind you. Softness with your husband who isn't as articulate about Islam and acquainted as you. Softness with your children, with your friends, with your neighbors. Lead people, bring them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We're getting to that time, aren't we, Prophet? Ten minutes, inshallah. The final two examples is the opposite of softness is sternness. The Prophet ﷺ was very stern as well. Never would he permit the, the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to happen in front of him. Allah says to you in the Quran that when people begin to blaspheme and to use vulgar language or to speak bad of our Creator, or of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or of the life that they have been given. You're not permitted to just remain in that time and in that place of sin and error. And in, even if you are not indulging in it, you are not to be a part of it in witness. Turn, turn your face, turn away until they change their language, until they change what they are upon. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very stern about the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, was very stern about the tradition and the culture that he bred amongst the Sahaba, that is to lead the Ummah in what we face today in difficulties as they were led in the difficulties at his time sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The appropriate measures and the appropriate tools that were set by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that same sunnah that was alive and practiced then, is a cure and is a tradition and is a sunnah for our times as well and for the times that will come after us. So you find the Prophet ﷺ saying to those who came to intercede on behalf of a woman of a noble lineage who had stolen, they came and said, Ya Rasulullah, she's from a high, she's from a high, high status family. Maybe we can overlook her error. He says to them, لَوْ أَنَّ فَاطِمَ صَرَكَ لَقَطَعْتُ يَدَهَا If my own daughter Fatima was, a, was found to have stolen and was found to be a thief, I would also order her punishment. He was unwavering in his way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that which is the truth. He was a legislator by the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَحْكُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ بِالْحَقِّ Truth was the aim of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and it is the truth that you and I appreciate in the spirit of his example and in the spirit of his sunnah. Peace and blessings be upon him. The final example I wish to offer for you today is the great example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu as an imam, as a leader of a community. He dressed the way everyone else dressed. People would come in, they would think Abu Bakr was the Prophet وسلم, Bedouins when they would come, they don't know who's Muhammad He wasn't pretentious. 
When he walked in the streets, you didn't really have a sense that he was secured or that people were protecting him. He would say to them, walk in front of me. Don't worry about my back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will guard me. He would sit and sleep under a tree without a guard, without a protector. His reliance was about, upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He lived an open life that is full of justice and wisdom. He led the community who first had no knowledge of this Islam. They had no very little inclinations upon, about the faith of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that great concept and principle of La ilaha illallah, only one God. The disavowment of the graven images and the idols that they had been accustomed to worshipping, they came to believe in that simple principle. They hadn't become familiar with the verses of the Quran. No laws had been revealed. The simplicity of the prayer was the extent of their Islam. And the Prophet produced from a cross-cultural community, from a Roman, from slaves, from the dark-skinned, from the Ajami, from the Arab, from the wealthy and from the poor, from the men and from the women, he produced a nation of people who have followed in his example sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That leadership is given to you and I by the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةً Let be from amongst you a nation of people, a community of people, يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ those who call others to righteous conduct. The leadership of the Prophet Muhammad was not simply condemning. He didn't just come to the people of Quraysh and say, don't worship your idols. He came to them and said, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not just to negate, it's not just to tell your children, your husband or your wife, this is haram, this is haram, this is haram. It is to show what is halal. How few are the questions that people who stand in front of you to speak, how few are the questions they receive that are of a positive action. It's always in the negative. Brother Yahya, is it haram if I... Brother Yahya, is it haram to do this? Very little do you find, Brother Yahya, what's the dua that you make for tahajjud? Very little you find. Brother Yahya, can you remind us of the dua of after wudu or during wudu? Brother Yahya, what was the most du used dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Brother Yahya, which day is it 13, 14 or 15 that we fast? Are they the white days? The sa'ayi fil khayr, the seeking and the spread of righteous deeds, كما يقول الإمام ابن تيمية, is greater and more virtuous than a nahi an al munkar It is better for you and your community and your people than forbidding evil. It is better to produce that culture of righteous conduct than to have a culture of impermissibility. These are the things we stay away from. The Prophet would breed and push people to the righteous deeds. These are the things you want to do. He would come to them into the masjid and he would say, say subhanallah 33 times after your prayer. Do this, do this, do this. He would recommend the righteous actions for his community. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us from the examples of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lessons that we place in our life. Leave today from this blessed masjid, my dear brothers in particular, with a fond admiration of your spouse with a greater promise within you to be more ideal in the example of the Prophet Muhammad In some communities you find the brothers ashamed to be, you know, soft with their wife. Okay, uh, we'll do this, but don't tell the other sisters because if the brothers find out, I don't want them to know that I'm doing the dishes. Wallahi, you find it. You find this within our community. You find it. They think that strength is to be, you know, you have to have that appearance, you have to look the part. Wallahi, the Prophet ﷺ was soft in that regard. So have that intention, inshaAllah, of greater involvement with your family, with your spouse, in your home, in the preparation of your food, in the actions that bring you closer.
and bring endearment between you and your spouse. Also have that fearlessness of the Prophet and that ability to live off whatever Allah has provided. That ability that you adjust yourself, you adjust your lifestyle, you prepare for the next day. You know that harder days are coming. Get ready. Get out of the debt. Make sure you lower your the value, the, the things that you are consuming. Be prepared as the Prophet ﷺ was. Have that courage that is instilled in others. And be from those who are soft, especially to those who come to you in their error, to those who come to you with their problem, to those who need support, not need condemnation, to those who need you to lift them up from their sin, not to push them down into further error. Pull people out of the difficulties that they find themselves in by having strayed from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But remain firm upon the hut. Don't be unwavering. Be firm upon the truth. Be firm upon the education of your children. Be firm upon the discipline that you have in your home. Be firm upon your salah. Be firm upon your ibadah. Be firm about who enters your home, which friends you have befriended. Who is friends with your husband? Who is friends with your spouse? Be firm. Be careful with that regard. And finally, be leaders. I leave you with the dua that is found in the end of Surah Al-Furqan. وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ They are those who are slaves of Allah, are from them those who say, رَبَّنَا, our Lord, هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُمْ O Allah, make from our wives, from our spouses, from our husbands, from our children, قُرَّةَ أَعْيُمْ Something that pleases the eye. وَجْعَلْنَا And make us, my whole family, جَعَلْنَا plural لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Examples to be followed by the believers in our community. That is the dua of the righteous man. That is the dua of the righteous woman. You want yourself and your children and your wife and your husband to have a standing before Allah, to be obedient to Allah, and you want to be a leader that people have this ghibta, this proper jealousy of your acts of worship to Allah. You want people to say, MashaAllah, I wish I knew the Quran that this brother knows. MashaAllah, my hijab was adjusted as this sister. MashaAllah, my children, I wish for them to learn the way that his children have learned. That they have the manners and the quiet voice that his children have. You want people to say that about you. Because you want to be a leader for the community of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا لَمَّا صَبَرُوا وَكَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يُوقِنُونَ We made from the communities, from the people, أَئِمَّة Leaders that people follow لَمَّا صَبَرُوا When they displayed patience and perseverance in the path of Allah and had unwavering faith in Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us readjust our life to the great examples of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let us be pillars and leaders within our community and take the responsibility and the da'wah of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah to the capacity that is deserving of the majesty of Allah Azza wa Jal. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim wa li wa lakum fastaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa an astaghfiru wa atuhu ilayhi. Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the riwayah of Imam Muslim. None shall enter Jannah based on your deeds. What it means to you, my dear brother, my dear sister who may be listening, is as much as you pray, as much as you fast, as much as you are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your life which is full of deficiency and khataya and errors and sins and stumbles, does not earn you the right to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment and demand admission. قَالُوا وَلَا أَنْتَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ The Sahaba asked, not even you, O Messenger of Allah, مَا مِنْكُمْ None, no human. قَالَ وَلَا أَنْتَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ He said, not even I. إِلَّا أَنْ يَتَغَمَّدَنِ اللَّهُ بِرَحْمَةِ Not even I shall gain admission to paradise based on our accordance to my deeds of righteousness and limit of evil 
No one shall enter, not even I, until Allah envelops me in His mercy and places me in Al-Jannah. We today are going to speak about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a life that we will extract lessons and examples. Because his life is full of lessons and examples. فَلْيَعْتَبِرْ Let the one who is able to ponder, to appreciate, to pick the important points of his life and practice them and relay them to others. فَقَدْ فَازْ That person is the successful one. The Prophet ﷺ, he says, كُلُّ أُمَّةِ يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ Which seems like a... I know the brothers are starting to sweat. <laughs> a husband. Do you know that Allah says to the Prophet ﷺ, in censor of him, in correction of him, in rehabilitation of a moment in the Prophet ﷺ's good intention, Allah says in the opening chapter of Surah Al Tahreem, Ya ayyuhan nabi, O Prophet of Allah, Lima tu harrimu ma ahallallahu lak. Why have you forbidden upon yourself something Allah made halal for you? And then Allah answers the rhetorical question. Tabtali mardata aswajik. You've done so to give comfort and to seek the pleasure of your wives. Listen, did you hear this verse, my dear brothers? The Prophet ﷺ, in a moment of his life, Rasulullah ﷺ, he declares for himself something made halal and says, it is haram for me to enjoy this from here on in for no other reason than to please his wives. The Prophet ﷺ would bathe his wife. Don't be shy by hearing these words. Aisha radiallahu anha kama yarwi Imam al-Bukhari. She says, when it was time for the Prophet and I to bathe, we would have one pot of water. He would take water with his hand and pour it over me. One day Aisha radiallahu anha contradictory, the opposite extreme of the first hadith. He says, everyone in my nation shall enter paradise. Illa man aba. Except the one who refuses himself. Qalu man ya'ba ya Rasulullah. Who's going to come and refuse on that day of judgment, the day of difficulty, the day of harshness, where only those who are blessed with the mercy of Allah shall gain admission? Who will reject it? The one who obeys me, the one who is in my fold, the one who is of me, of my people, enters Jannah, gains admission to eternal delight and paradise. The one who rejects me and disobeys me has excluded himself from Jannah. Our aim today is to hear the words of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and obey. I want you to imagine yourself, and it's an impossibility, of being privileged enough to have been a Sahabi. I want you to picture just for a moment. Just give me five minutes. Dream. Dream that you wake up tomorrow and you are in the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You're running to the masjid to hark. The call to the salah, hayya ala salah, hayya ala al-falah. You know the man that will lead you in salah is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Think of what your heart feels like. I want you to imagine it, memorize it. What emotions you have, what anticipation you have, how quickly you will rush. How much desire you have to stand in that first line. But see, the Prophet وسلم, as he sat on his mimbar, moments before his death, وسلم, he began to weep. And he said, Ahbabi, the ones I love, 
The Sahaba said, Anahnu ahbab. Are we the ones, or aren't we the ones who you love, O Messenger of Allah? He says to them, Antum ashabi. You and I, we can't be his ashab. He says to them at that time, No, you are my companions. Ahbabi alladheena yu'minuna bi wa lam yarawni. The ones I love are the ones who believe in me and have not seen me. You're privileged as well. You're privileged. You have been honored by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu to be of the few who come to answer the call to prayer and who seek to hear the words of Allah and the words of His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa It's Friday night. I don't know how hip Birmingham is. But in other places around the world, Friday night is an adventure. It could be an adventure in immorality. And for some like us, an adventure into the abode and into the lifestyle and into the habit of our Prophet Muhammad I wish just to give five examples from his life due to the shortness of time. The brother was really firm, 40 minutes. Like he didn't say 45, right? It was 40. Because 45 is too long, 40 is acceptable. Alhamdulillah. But we had agreed on this, inshallah. Five examples. First, as a husband. Muhammad was a husband. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inna alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina man yahdihi allahu falamudilla lahu wa man yudhil falahadiya lahu wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashadu anna muhammadan abdullahi wa rasooluh sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim wa ba'ah. We always begin with the praise of Allah. We send our peace and greetings and salutations upon the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We testify with full firmness, conviction, and faith that none is worthy of worship but Allah, and that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his worshiping slave and final messenger. Ahibati fillah, the greatest command that Allah subhanahu wa taala has enjoined upon humanity. From awalina li akhirina, from our beginning to our end, an intaqullah. Be mindful and conscious, aware of your duties to Allah. Haqqa tuqatih, in the capacity and the measure that He is deserving of, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to complete our life upon our tawheed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our belief in Him, our Islam to Him, surrendering to Him with love, with fear, and with hope in His mercy, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ma minkum min ahad. There is none of you. Not a single one. Ya yadkhulil jannah bi'amali. Who shall enter paradise in accordance to his actions of worship.